Hello humans and welcome to my installment of KCAT commentary. This is basically the more ranty sort of blogging I'm doing. Um, just kind of rambling about some of the things that I'm ranting about. And today I want to rant about something that's really close to my heart but at the same time it really just it makes me cringe when I hear it. So without further ado, why don't we get grooving? <laughs> Okay, as some of you know, I am an artist. I love to draw, I love to write stories, I love to do all sorts of cool things. I'm even getting on YouTube and I'm starting to do more things and even trying to dabble into digital art more. More so for traditional, I'm actually dabbling in more because there is a high demand and it's perceived more as pretty, which we'll also get into with one of my rants. As an artist, I see things and I have done a little bit of both. I've self-taught myself to draw for the most part. I haven't taken any lessons. I took some classes in high school to learn about the principles of design and the basic fundamentals of art and the history of art from the traditional era, from contemporary impressionism and all sorts of things. So I do have a pretty condensed and pretty various knowledge of art and its history and its origins, which is something that is very passionate to me. So of course I'm going to have some observance that may be a bit different or maybe more detailed than other people. But these are some of the things that I see on both sides of the artist themselves and the people who know nothing about the art. Okay, first things first, as I'm going to say, I'm going to start with some of the things that the outsiders do that grind my gears. Because of course I want this to appeal to the artist. Later we'll get on to some of the things that us in the community do and that can very, be very harmful to other people in the community or just seen as snobby and pretty much elitist behavior. So at first, I want to say, when I first got into the art community, I was like the outsiders. I didn't really know. There were people who really drew, who drew very, very well and they were really awesome. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'll never be like them. But I actually practiced. I hate when people come up to you. Now as an artist of my own, I can actually halfway draw someone decent. People come up to me all the time saying, hey, you want to draw something for me? Well, you draw so well. I don't even know if I could draw. Oh my gosh, I can just draw stick figures. We get it. You can draw stick figures. You can't draw worth shit in your eye. You think you can't draw. You really want some pity so I can draw something for you for free. We get it. All you have to do is ask. You don't have to give out this whole pity party. That was when I was younger, in high school and in art, and I needed to practice more. Now don't get me wrong, I know some artists are more on commission, less than request, or they're more for art trade. I didn't mind, at least back then, giving requests, and still somewhat now to friends and family. I don't mind request, someone requesting a drawing from me, but don't come to me with this pity party. Like, I can't draw, I can only draw stick figures. I can't draw worth crap. I can't even draw stick figures. Which is a blatant, this is fucking bullshit, because everybody can draw stick figures. A three-year-old, a two-year-old can draw stick figures kind of squiggly stick figures, but they're still stick figures. It's very annoying when people come to you with pity, saying, oh, you well, I can't draw. <laughs> and it's like, chill, just cut the crap and just ask for a request. The worst they can do is say no. It's really not that hard. It just grinds my gears when I hear people do that. And it's, it's with anything, not just art, but with anything. Somebody wants something and they just prepare this whole sob story instead of just telling you the truth. They just want something drawn because they really like your art. Nine times out of 10, if you really tell someone how you feel that I think your art is amazing and I'd love to have a piece of it for my own, they may just draw just because they're flattered by your compliment. I mean, some people are may just say no still, but I mean, you could have a chance there. Instead of throwing a pity party and trying to make them feel bad, it's already like in my head, I'll always be like, no. No, not gonna do this. Not gonna do this. It's just really, really annoying. Number two. Now, I personally haven't had this problem yet, but I know a few artist friends who have. And I also know I've seen in forums where this is a huge reoccurring problem and it really does need to stop. When somebody requests a commission from you online and say that you are, um, they, you're, they're looking at your commission prices, most people, the average commissioner, does have fairly decent prices. 
they are fairly decent in their price range because they are going by their level of artistic skill and the level of time it takes to create an art piece. I may be relatively cheap compared to a lot of other artists who are at a higher skill level and their details are much more on point and magnificent than mine. But then there are people who when they ask for a commission or they act like they're interested, they will message you or talk to you and say, Hey, I really want a commission from you. How much is this and that? And you give them their prices and then they'll go for other one of two ways. One, they'll see the prices right off the back and say, That's expensive. And I'm like, hmm, well if it's expensive then I guess my commission prices aren't for you. It's the value of art. Then they'll either, or either they'll keep going and see you and say, Oh, that's nice. Like, can I get a installment or can I get a discount, maybe a free trial, or a request more so? No. No, you cannot. It Commission, you have to understand, there are artists who aren't for just freelance. They live off of their art. Their art is their source of income. They need the money that they get. If you see the art is that kind of quality, you need to buy the art or pay the price for the commissions. That is their livelihood and that's what they need to survive. It is that expensive because of all the materials. You have to understand, what goes into getting art is that you have to buy the materials, buy the mediums for it, buy the canvas, depending on what you're wanting. Uh, it depends on if you're a digital artist. Uh, digital artists have to bring out time, but they could be working on their job, could have a secondary job or something, with this art. So they need something to survive on. That could be food fuel for when they're drawing this for you. Um, there are several things that go into it. A gloss finish, because they are very particular about their art, they want it to be top notch. So it makes takes money to make money. And it needs to be something that needs to be addressed. And I think people who are commis commissioning need to be serious about commissioning someone. Don't run around the bush and say, Oh, I thought it'd be cheaper. Or, oh, why do I have to pay so much? Don't pay. Or move on. You're not getting a discount. You're not getting a free request. You're not getting a trial or something like that. I don't even know how you can get a trial with art. It's not going to happen. So stop asking. People have these as their jobs and their livelihoods. And I also hate another thing, rude behavior toward artists when they don't do something for free or do a request or do an art trade with you. There are people who do not do art trades because your art does not appeal to them like that and they don't want to do requests because they aren't for doing free art. Like I said, it's their livelihood, it's what they want. And it's kind of irritating when people say that, especially if they don't say it rudely to you, an artist, and they'll be like, yeah, I'm, um, I'm not really in for requests, I'm a commissioned artist, I need this for money, that's why I'm doing it. And they'll get rude and they'll say, well, you're not a real artist anyway, a real artist would do it for free. I'm sorry, do you know what a real artist is? Like, what the fuck, that is some bullshit on ice. That's not true. A real artist loves and appreciates their art. Hence why most artists who are good will put a value set on their art because it is that good and they love it and they want their art to be known and at a value. And these days, when museums are going out there and putting a splatter of paint or making someone screaming for 10 minutes, or just putting some strings on a white canvas or a black canvas as museum quality art, you should know it is such a struggle for an artist who does real and good and detailed things like back in the traditional art and impressionist era where there was so much detail and heart and soul into your art and not just a rock. Thousands of dollars paid for a rock or paid for a thin blue line on a white canvas or maybe just some red or blue splattered paint everywhere. That is, in my opinion, with the contemporary art system in museums now, it's bullshit and it's not good. And that is why a lot of artists are struggling to make it on their own because for some reason the art industry feels like it's better to make money off of not even thought out artwork than artwork that people take hours and time into that you actually would want. I guess it's because of cheapness, I don't know, but that's a whole nother video if you want some rants on the art industry itself. But I'm just saying, as people who are outsiders looking in on an artist and their work, 
please take into account what they go through and what struggles they have to face every day just to get their art out there and how already the bar is low for an artist that's actually serious about making their own work which is why a lot of artists take the lazy way out and usually kind of not even lazy just the easier way and draw other people's works <sighs> you just you need to understand have some discretion and don't be a dick this is their careers and their lives on the line. Be chill. Now on the issue of artists themselves. This may not be as long as I'd like it to be. This may be as short as I'd like it to be. I don't know. We'll see. Now as far as the artist community themselves, it's pretty genuinely welcoming. Um, in a sense, it depends on what you draw. Now, there's elitism in everything. And no special thing gets a sort of pass or a discretion or harsh criticism for their level of elitism. There are some places in the art world where it's just like, why? Your art style, if it's not something that the status quo will agree with to the, norm the normacies of what we see today, it won't work. For what do you mean, Kay? What do you mean? All art is art. Yes, that's true. But some art is noticed more than others. For if you are in different subgroups of art, you will find that there are better favored art than others. For example, it grinds my gears when in, a, say, an anime group, uh, where you're particularly making anime or manga creations, um, you will draw. I've had this problem myself. I know it's not like I'm bitching about nothing that should be necessary for my bitching, but I um, basically you're drawing, uh, you're drawing, say, I tend to love to draw Naraku. I love drawing Naraku. He is my inspiration. I'm trying to collect everything Naraku and whatnot. I, my art, 90 to 95% of my art consists of Naraku in some aspect or another. I enjoy drawing him. I'll draw him and I'll post a picture, which I really worked hard on. I'm a traditional artist, so I worked hard. I colored it shaded it properly as best as I thought. I'm still learning, of course I'm not perfect, and I'll be there. Then you see people, um, it's a bit of a different vibe, more of a 90s kind of old anime style that I like to incorporate into my art, uh, mixed with kind of Nakamura Asumiko style. If you don't know who that is, you should look her up. It's more long limbs and very nice and exaggerated hair features when it flows. I really love that, I do not as that aspect. I will post it onto a forum. I may get maybe four likes, and they're mostly to the people who I know, who are friends with, and they like my art. But then there will be people who are draw a uh, more moish kind of art. It's more moish. It'll be mo. It'll be digital. If you're in the anime art world, you better. It's either the pictures that get liked the most or the. Com like someone who drew Yuno Gasai in her portrayal in the anime uh, adaptation. They'll get a big picture from the screenshot and they'll just draw it, usually on notebook paper or maybe even clear paper, but it looks completely, like, it, I don't want to say trace, but completely copied exactly the same. And they use the shading, which in a way anybody can look at a drawing and reference it. Some people are more for trying to experiment with other things. Even when you ask any comment, any uh, feedback, nobody gives you feedback on your stuff, but you get 100 plus likes on things that are literally copy, carbon copies of an artwork. There's nothing brilliant about that, in my opinion. That's just me being a little bitchy, but I mean, that's what I think. And also, it'll be things that are very moe, very sleek, very digital. People favor digital art more over tra traditional art, which digital more so software. You can do cool effects. It doesn't take as long. You actually, it's, people argue that digital art isn't as easy as traditional art. I say it's more of a spoil for you. While you're, you are working at the same maximum limit, you know, pretty much the same time frame of it, you have better leeway and it's better to cheat, especially with coloring. If you mess up on a traditional art, you 
pretty much fucked. You can't, unless it's watercolor, thank god, you could water it out. But if it's something like markers or uh, color pencils or even crayons, I've done them with crayons, um, it's pretty bad. You have to pretty much start all over again and it's not that good. Now if you have a digital art, you can do layers of coloring. The background, the backdrop, you can copy and paste a picture, especially if you have Photoshop. There, the sky's the limit. It's so much easier with digital art. You'll see things that look beautiful and painted, but it didn't take hardly as much work as that person who put every single detail into their um, traditional drawing and it's way more detailed. It may not be as slick and as pretty as a digital art, but it's really put in all that effort and it's all that work. And people give maybe 10 likes to it, while that digital art is giving 100 likes because it looks pretty. And I think that's kind of unfair. I know it's not an intentional, your art sucks kind of thing. It's more of a visually appealing stimulus. But as artists, we need to help uplift each other. And that is digital artists, traditional artists, and all sorts of it. I think we need to brand our horizon. Another thing I have an issue with is any sort of criticism. And I don't mean saying, that kind of sucks. The boobs lopsided. Or something like that. But back to my point. I can cosplay something that is very, very June. I could cosplay something that isn't as racy, maybe even a male I could cosplay, and I could show that women can cosplay other costumes. That is the same thing with art. You do not completely belittle someone's style and what they choose to do as their means of art because it doesn't appeal to you. Just go find something else that's different in what you want. There's thousands, there's millions of people who make art every single day and pour their heart out. I'm sure if you look deep enough, you can find it. Sometimes you have to actually look. It's not there for you like you're so used to seeing. I know technology has gotten us to be so fucking lazy and so fucking slow, but sometimes you need to use the brain that God or the universe or whatever you believe gave you and blessed you or bestowed upon you. Maybe you should use it. Get There's any cobwebs out of your gears and start getting them to quit. It just boggles me how people will use that as a justification to basically diss someone's art. And another thing, um, artists who will say, I don't like that, or I don't like that art style, okay? And this isn't for you, I'm sorry I discord and burned your eyes with my horrid art that you think is. It's just, it's unnecessary. Some of the little snide comments from the elitist, it's just like, no. Oh gosh, and I really hate when people who are on that high level of art who draw beautifully, it's like a masterpiece, digital or traditional, and they say things like, oh my gosh, my art is so ugly. Don't look at it. But post it anyway online. It's so ugly. And then you see thousands and Thousands of comments just flooding in saying, Your art is so beautiful, turn it tight, it's perfect, why did you say that? And I'm just sitting here. Because why would you do that? That is pity points, and I hate, hate, hate pity points. If you are a good artist, you don't need pity to instill your art. My god, that's so irritating. People who use pity to get their art noticed, unless it's a legitimate reason, like your grandmother died or your guardians died and you're the only one left, and something like that. That I understand because that is tragedy and that happens, but stuff like <laughs> and it looks flawless, and it is flawless. That is some ride or die bullshit, and I've seen people do it. And I've seen them go off on another website like DeviantArt and post it in a contest and win. It was a previous work that they posted in a contest, and it won. That was the same art they tried to use and say, my art is so ugly. 
Like, I get it. I get it. People in the art community are sensitive to depression and anxiety and uh, things like that. More uh, mentally um, debilitating and kind of wearing things that wear down on your mental uh, stability. But please, do not use it to make your art better. To make you, to get people to notice you. Dear God, if I did that, I'm pretty sure everyone would think my art was just fine and dandy. Hell, even now I think my art isn't nearly as good as people say. But I'm not gonna go around saying, oh. Well, I'm so scared to post this. And then I post it online. And I'm like, okay. Oh. It just, ooh. Mm. Someone, but I just want to be. Stop! Stop! I found what you're looking for. Attention! Nobody, nobody sincerely cares like that. Please stop. But if you were to call it out, of course you'd be considered a. Uh, you'd be called a shamer, art shamer. That's a new thing now. I don't know why. Uh, you'd be called a bully. It's just the list would go forever. And I'm just like, no, stop. Artist needs to stop. It. And then they'll say things. When they say things like that, it's not only a pathetic reflection on them personally and their lack of esteem on their art, it also can make someone whose art is not nearly at your level as uh, nearly the level as yours. To basically say, well, man, if she doesn't really think her art is good, what is my art? And that could bring down people who look up to you, or even just people who are confident about their art and they see that and they're like, well, damn, my art must not be. That's like a very slim, thin, petite person saying, oh my gosh, I look so fat. And there's not a lump of fat on their body. So someone who has bigger, who's much bigger like me, say if I was somebody who had low self-esteem um, and suffered from anxiety about my weight, and I saw that and I'd be like, well, well I must be fucking real. Because you think you're fat, what am I? That's just so harmful and so pity and it's pathetic and stop. That's what I personally think. You may have a different opinion, but dear, I just hate that so much. No. Oh, God. No. Another thing I have to address. I have to address the double standards in art. And this can go for race, and this goes for sexuality, and this goes for, I guess, religion may fall into it. Okay, on the race. A lot of black... P-O-C, people of color, I guess that term is just a new term for calling people colored. I don't know, I don't get into the P-O-C thing. Artists are really, really, really adamant about blackifying everything. Which, oh my goodness, I don't really care. I think it could be great. I love some of the artists who um, do black versions of Sailor Moon, black versions of uh, black versions of Tinkerbell, black versions of Bayonetta. I've seen very good art with that. And I have no problem. Just like I used to be into way art, um, slash mpreg, which is basically like um, taking a character who may be skinny and making him fat, which was a huge accepted thing in like, the, especially the deviant art community. People love that. I have several groups I'm still a part of with that. Um, but then there's the double standard of if you decide to do a black character white or pale or something like that, or if you make a traditionally uh, chubby character, say, make Rose Quartz from Steven Universe. I say this because that was one of the recent examples used and actually got a huge backlash. Um, you make them thinner or skinny, not anorexic, but maybe thinner or have a little, you know, a little hourglass. You are considered body shaming or inaccurate, even though it's fan art, which is the fan's depiction of an artistic prose. And you're considered some racist slash body shaming, misogyn, I don't even know. They just throw all sorts of words at you and you're supposed to kill yourself and all this bullshit. 
it, it irritates me because that is not fair. That is a double standard. You cannot make a black version of the Sailor Scouts or a black version of the Powerpuff Girls, which is a common thing. I don't know why. Because the Powerpuff Girls have never been about race. They've just been about three little girls with superpowers who were accidentally created by Professor Utonium and they go around saving the city. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And they're created as uh, black versions and black people embrace that. Yes, it's black acceptance. But I never ever see them drawing black action characters. They'll draw OCs, which is beautiful, which is okay, that's fine. But when it comes to fan art, they have to blackify everything because I don't know if it's a void they need to fill and they're really insecure about themselves or they really just feel like that they can do what they want because they're black. There are black people who believe that they can't be racist because they're black. They may have that kind of complex going on. But if someone were to draw a white version of a black character, which not many people do that. Some people do because they just want to see different perspectives. They're one of those um, um, different POV kind of artists. I've seen and met a few and they do it with everything like they'll do an albino version of uh, a certain animal that they've never seen before or they might do a um, opposite like Asian to Hispanic they might switch that around um, they might do something like human version of an animal you know they're just perspective artists they're not doing it for an ulterior motive uh, some black artists do the same when they do black versions of well she look like if she were black which is perfectly fine but those same some of those same people People will do that and they see a white version of someone or a skinny version of a fatter character and say you can't do that because it's not politically correct but here you are creating black versions of people I even seen this black feminist saying that what if Superman was a black woman she would be feared by everyone and I'm like what are there not black superheroes like storm I'm probably getting into the wrong franchises here I don't know all the superheroes like storm um, there's about the only black character I just know because she's so hyped because I'm not really into the comics. But there are so many black characters. Same thing with cosplay, because cosplay is considered an art form. People in the cosplay community complain about having no black people to cosplay, having no black characters to draw. That is such bullshit, I can't even laugh long enough. Off the top of my head alone, I could probably name about 30 to 40 characters that I've seen in just anime and manga alone, whether they be main, supporting, or even a huge part of a cast. You want to know a few who are actually very glamorous? Kanamani Crystal and Gutsuho. They are about the main characters of the anime. Now, the family structure that goes on there is quite weird I mean, to me. Mondigo, Fernand Mondigo, uh, Mercedes Mondigo. Dante Edmonds, they are all black people and the main characters. They are very elegant and they would be recognized at a convention, especially if someone were to watch it. Even though Gankutsu is half semi-underrated, it's very, very good. Um, there are brown skin like Antonia Bellucci from Heat Guy J. Um, there are the little uh, Indian slash black girl from Kaon, Anthe Hinamiya and Akio Hinamiya from Utena Revolutionary Girl. There is actually a black Sailor Scout in Sailor Moon. I have confirmed this. I know this. And she's very beautiful. Very beautiful. I don't know what planet she is. I don't know what celestial being she is. I'm not really into Sailor Moon like that, but I am. Kizaru. Aokiji. Um, I forgot his name. He's one of the guys who live on the, uh, who lives on Sky Island. And he's one of the supernovas from One Piece. Um, uh, there are so many. You could even pass Robin from One Piece off as black, as some people have done um, with uh, Water 7 and when she was very tan. Very, very tan. Um, I can think of more. Oh, there are even certain characters in like Inuyasha who are tan, dark. They have that brown, blackish look. I forgot her name. She was a half demon, just like Inuyasha. She was, it was about four episodes long, her story, and it was very good. And people would recognize her. She wasn't like one of those bland characters out in the face. She was that. And you don't even have to find black characters. You could make them your own, which is great, but you can't go around saying, you can do this, but you can't do that because it's not PC. It's just a double standard, and I hate that within both cosplay and art and all sorts and forms of art. Same with way art and skinny art. They're telling a girl who did a tiny thin drawing. When not too long ago, there was about a, I want to say, 
I've been on DeviantArt since 2007. I discovered Way Art about 2010. I discovered Way Art 2010, and there are art. There's art literally dedicated to making a character morbidly obese or chubby or making the skinnier characters chubby and people accept that and it's cool with that which I was cool with that I'm cool with the skinny based art if it looks good on them it's a drawing it's a style of drawing and it is embraced by a community so what is the difference between people accepting way based art and people accepting skinny based art it doesn't matter people feed into the stigmas society puts on us when as people we literally could drop stigmas race notions break down hate groups and things like that with a basic necessity of just saying you got your thing I got mine that doesn't make you racist doesn't make you prejudiced you just have preferences it's, it's just it's so stupid and oh, it's just so stupid and it takes away from the artistic prose of art um, there's actually a black guy um, from Finland I think Finland. He does art and he turns the whole, the terribly mocking um, of African Americans or Black Americans during the Jim Crow era blackface and he takes the little dolls and he turns them into a work of art. Now it's very controversial. I know a lot of black folks who see it as hate, self-hate or whatever, um, but he's, he's very passionate about it. Um, he actually makes some of the art look good, and I don't mean in the sense of mocking black people, I mean the arrangements he does. It's actually, you don't see, in my opinion, I don't see blackface when I see his art. I see the difference of an entire culture. Same with Afrocentric art. People do Afrocentric art. It's, and it's a lot of catered to sex, too. If you're a black artist and you don't draw something with a sexy woman on it, it's, it's a double standard with sexuality. There's my other point. Sexuality. You can have a naked woman with her tatas out or her cooch showing, and it will get a hundred, maybe three K likes on it. Or it'll show just a smidge of her butt on the thing, and it'll be like, that's beautiful. Ooh, so sensual, so sexy. What? Then, when art like mine, um, I don't post the not suitable for work, the, the penises, because apparently guys are triggered by seeing a penis, but women aren't triggered by seeing a vagina. I, I don't understand that. I never will understand that. That's some male insecurities a little bit with some of the males who have that problem. But I will see that, and one time I, um, in in artist group, I posted um, a photo of... I posted three versions of it. I posted the inking, uh, the sketching, the inking, and the coloring final product of one of my drawings. And for the most part, it was received rather well. Uh, people liked it. It was, um, some of you may know, I could find it maybe. Uh, it was actually this work right here. This was exactly the work I posted. And I posted it three separate times throughout a four or five hour time period and it was this this particular finished product right here this was what got the most praise and recognition and uh, some guys or some people thought they were uh, it was a female in the middle and two males um, but I quickly told them before anything got started that it was three males and the males have that bishi kind of feminine look that's how they were created by the creator of Miko Takahashi and most people were on board I have been I people said there were hate comments I haven't seen them yet um, but the admin deleted it and my impression was on their rules it says that the admins usually delete posts and they let you know they warn you if you're violating the rule nobody warned me and it was ironic the one I got the most popular they deleted and I was kind of butthurt about it, and then especially when I messaged several admins about it, and they did not respond, they didn't even answer my messages for like hours, and then I finally posted on the group, even though it was against the rules, and I told this one, I, I told one of the admins who kind of scolded me for it, and that was the only way I could even get a response, ironically enough, and I messaged her and she said it was probably sexually explicit. I've seen worse than this in that group. 
I have literally seen where the guy is literally about to finger the girl. Um, is it, I forgot his name. He shoots lasers out of his eyes in the Marvel franchise. Um, I'm, I'm a terrible comic book nerd. Um, I'm more of an anime manga person, please forgive me. And, uh, the goth girl, I guess, from the, um, X-Men franchise. They were together, and he was literally fingering her in her suit. Like, going down on her about to. He was about to rub her clit. And they were getting nothing but praise. Meanwhile, LGBT slash kind of yaoi art that I posted, which was well received to a lot of people, and they liked it. And even people were telling me that I was getting hate from a few people, and I guess that's why they took it down. That was extremely rude and extremely hurt me. Um, you can have sexualization of females, you would probably could have a full-on lesbian scene, and it would pass off. But if um, two males or a male is considered sexualized, um, any sort of nudity or implied nudity, people are quick to censor, people are quick to wig out. This also happened about a day ago with a person who posted in a fan art group based on a specific anime. Uh, y'all, some of y'all might already know what I'm talking about. She posted um, a art of a particular male character in a sort of uh, s &M kind of, he was tied up, he had on, he had on clothes, which is a lot more than some of the posts I've seen. He had on clothes, it was kind of a crop top, the, the nips were there, they weren't looking like breasts, but they were there, they were pecs, his pecs were out, and he had on like a, uh, I guess you could say like the girl standard boxers, they're kind of short, but they were in latex, it was a latex look, and it wasn't the rule state in that particular group, that you can, yaoi is fine. Or it wasn't, she didn't even really consider it yaoi. Um, but I knew people were going to start it as a yaoi and try to hate on it, which they did in very massive amounts, and I did try to defend her. I'm not sure if she approved of me trying to defend her or not, um, but I still tried because as a fellow artist who partakes in art kind of like that, I knew how bad that would feel if someone was just like, you're disgusting, don't draw this again. And they were just going off and going off and talking about how disgusting it was and whatnot. And I'm like, how is this any different than the other stuff posted? Fan art posted in the group's uh, forum and feed that are pretty much to that caliber. And then I got with that and I was like, they were just basically trying to justify it. I basically got countering theirs. I even brought up screenshots of other things that other people have posted and I'm like, we can equally love both of them. You may not like the content, oh well, but you don't have to be a dick about it. That's one of the things I hate, being, people being a dick about someone else's art because it's not particularly what they would have liked to see. And it's just a double standard, like the females with, there's literally a picture of like two of the girls from this franchise sitting there, like, okay, I can't do it, I'm not sexy at all, but they're literally sitting opposed on a bed with their hip up, and they're wearing like a G-string with like barely nip covers. They're like Lady Gaga nip covers. If you've ever seen Lady Gaga's nip covers, they don't leave much to the imagination. They are literally right there on the ring of the nipple. And I'm like, that got like a hundred something likes. But the girl who was bitching, the other girl who was bitching about the actual art itself had a post where it was literally them facing this way. And they had nothing but undies on. And there was no shirt, and they had small, large, um, medium, small, medium, large, or whatever. I'm sure people who know the franchise like that and the manga like that knew, I guess, knew that it was regarding to their actual body size and not their tit size. But any guy, horny guy, could see that could be tit size. It was debatable. Um, and then there was other posts that she did, that the artist did, and she's actually drawing the fan art, she's not getting something off a of Tumblr like many of us do. And she basically said, she didn't, she was just talking about, this is some of the doodles I did at work. She wasn't meaning for it to be some revolutionary look. And one of the characters was a male and he had a little bulge, a looty bulge. Oh my goodness, I, I didn't realize bulges were lewd, but tits hanging out of your shirt, like a damn prostitute is considered cool and normalized. So I actually did write a comment on it and um, I think I can actually screenshot the comment because I was just so pissed off 
that basically they were telling them the Yaoi are, because I run and manage the Yaoi section of that group. Um, there's a group that we had to make because of so much hate, ironic, of the male um, on male kind of pairings. They weren't even explicit, but they thought so. And we made a group for it. And it's like, you take that shit to the Yaoi group or the Yuri group, which was actually a Yaoi and a Yuri group, but people like to associate it with the Yaoi the most. And basically, they just sort of just said, take that shit to Tumblr and all that. That's the excuse that a lot of dick writing Reddit. 4chan wannabes use a, a wannabe, they literally want to be the characters of this franchise, so they act shitty in personality, and it doesn't really convey the same way as it does in the characters in the manga, but they say, take that shit to Tumblr, take that shit to Yowie Bill, or whatever, and I just had to step in, and I'm like, okay, first of all, this is, not, this is nowhere near the kind of content that is posted in the um, Yowie Yuri group that we run. Second of all, why is it that every time art that is depicting women in a sexualized manner is okay, a circle jerk, a fat material, it's literal, you can hear the fapping in the thread. Like, you can hear the tongue typing as each stroke of their pre-mature bomb ascending. Just like fapping to this picture, but when someone does a male's in a sexualized fashion, it's suddenly their balls just retract back into their body, and they're all crude and oh, that's too lewd for this group. I don't think we can handle it. What? Like, are you serious? And then they say things like, "That's so wrong. Don't ever show this fetishy stuff again." But showing a ta a rack of tits isn't fetishy. I don't understand. I'll never understand some males, or some even some females, males and females, and their whole hate for sexualized men being in pretty much the same position as women. I guess it's just a male ego thing or a threatened masculinity thing. I don't, I don't ever understand. But in the regards to art, all art is art. All art should be seen with the same caliber. I guarantee if you put one um, male in the same outfit as a female's sort of thing. Like, I guess those little kitty heart bras that have been, like, cancerously plaguing the internet, those, you put those on a guy of the same cartoon franchise as one of the females, and I bet you'll get some uncomfortable guys, and they'll find some way to just completely ride off the notion that that can be a thing now. And I'm just like, um, it's so easy for anyone to have some sort of artistic, if a female has an artistic, or even a male has an artistic prose, to just put a male in the same situation as guys put females in, it's suddenly taboo and oh, we can't have such lewd behavior, it's so wrong. And it's just like, you're fucking hypocrite. You're so stupid. Why? Why? Ugh. And with that, and other artists do this too. Um, most artists are pretty chill about stuff like that. They may not find it favorable, they'll just move on. Some people even shout people out who aren't of their same artistic caliber. But a lot, there's a lot of things that work into the artist and artist community slash artist to outsider community. Some art groups even try to separate the regular art with the lewd, they clump the regular art and the female lewd art with the art that is uh, more male lewd to separate it because there are people who can't handle themselves. Or this is for children, but mm, sexualizing female is normalcy. I don't hate sexualization of females. It's not personally something I would do um, because one thing, I can't draw boobs with a damn. So I couldn't do it. It would look super awkward and super weird. But my thing is, is it's if it's equally as sexual, I don't think people should freak out about one side, but totally cool with another. Of course you're not, you're into what you're into, but art isn't always about what the subject matter is about. It's about the quality of the art. I've met people who have seen some of the art I share about DBZ Yaoi. They're not into DBZ Yaoi. They may not even be to DBZ, but they see the art and they say, that is some damn good art. Even though it may be gay art, it is some good art. That is good looking art. You can just appreciate art. Why can't we just be nice to each other? 
if you can't love some of the stuff that goes at least tolerate and you don't even have to tolerate at least respect that that's that person's interest and that's what that person wants and stop trying to change everything and control even the art community the art community and the comedic community are one of those things that anything goes nothing is off limits for ideas and prose so stop trying to make everything pc y'all take pc with speech and music and even some books y'all can do that but don't do that into the art community or comedic community or things that are for free thinkers alike people get into art so they can think freely without being judged and i mean of course there's gonna be criticism constructive criticism preferably constructive criticism and we take it as we go but in the end, can we all just sit around and do art? It doesn't even matter. So, oh my gosh. And one more thing before I go, I'd like to mention the amount of all art is art. Just like all cosplay is cosplay. All art is art. If somebody likes to make dresses, they like to do culinary art, meaning they like to dress them up a mean cake, or they like to design clothes and bags, Yes, even gluing and bedazzling things on handbags, in a sense, however they want to, is art. Photography, that is an art. That takes a lot of patience and a lot of angling and timing it just right. Modeling, no, not Instagram modeling, but modeling as far as creating a pose and a work of art for the photographer. That is also considered art. And there are other things. Writing and poems are considered art. They are a form of art, a form of free expression and free thinking. Everyone can have some art. It's not just about drawing something on a picture. You don't have to draw a picture to be an artist. You can write, you can create things, you can sew, you can take pictures of things, you can model for things to create a perfect pose. You and dress in costume, create costume, that is a form of art. It's all, the sky is the limit for art. As long as you're doing it because you love it and it's close to your heart. So I do hope you enjoyed this rant video. I was kind of all over the place. I do tend to ramble when I'm ranting or talking of any sort of type. Um, if you did like this video, please let me know. Give it a like comment you can subscribe to my channel down below and if you want to see more rants like this let me know what kind of rants or you can subscribe so you can get a notification when you get some of these rants so i hope you all live in harmony peace let us tolerate one another and let's stay grooving and be human like we all love stay grooving human